Hi, this is Bill from Hiragari. I've got another Logic tutorial for you. The Logic tutorial I put up a few years ago was how you can use multiple MIDI controllers to control different soft synth at the same time in Logic. The number one comment, the number one bit of feedback that I got, people asking, well, how do I record the output of those keyboard controllers into individual kind of tracks in the arrange window? Well, figured out how to do it. Took me a couple of years. I've been a bit busy. You can see the studio is kind of updated. I'm in a new building. And uh, we can put it together in the environment in Logic. It takes about a minute and we can do it in Logic Pro and we can do it in Logic X. So let's go. Okay, so here is my Logic session that I've got set up here. Uh, you can see that there's three uh, tracks um, here in the arrange window. What I've got is I've got three different instruments. Okay, so at the moment, if I just play those, the top one is a keyboard sound, the middle one's a pad and the bottom one is an arpeggio. Now, I've chosen these three sounds just because it'll be kind of obvious where they're coming from and because I've got three keyboards that I'm going to patch in. So you might have, you can have up to 16 keyboards because there's 16 MIDI channels. You might want to have a massive jam and run everything off one computer with synthesizers um, or you may uh, be an organist and you want to record the different registers um, to individual channels. Okay, so the first thing is, is to set up um, the sounds that you want uh, on individual things if you're using soft synths. Okay, this is the next thing you're going to want to do. So I'm going to start over here and I need to have a look specifically at the MIDI settings for each of my software instruments. Okay, so on here, okay, I can see MIDI channel 1 and what I've done is I'm just clicking here and I'm selecting because they'll default to all. Okay, so I want to make sure that it matches up with the MIDI channels. And I've labeled these here so that I don't know which ones that they are. Okay, and this one here you can see it's set on number three. Now that's really important that you know which instrument is on which MIDI channel. Okay, so you can see here the um, top is uh, the keyboard sound is on channel one, uh, the pad sound on the middle keyboard controller is on channel two, and the bottom keyboard controller, the arpeggio, uh, arpeggiator is on channel three. Okay, so now we're going to go and have a look at the environment window. So I'm going to load the environment by pressing Command 8. You can also go up to Window and select it from there. Uh, I'll just drag that a little bit smaller so that it fits inside the window here. Okay, so this is the environment. Now, it'll default probably to the mixer view or one of these other views, and you can see all of the elements here. What we want is Click and Ports. Now, when we go into Click and Ports, it will have something like this. Um, it, it might depend on your version. This is what it comes up with for me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of these things by clicking on them and hitting the delete key and select them, get rid of MIDI click. The only thing that we want to keep is the sequencer input. Now, all of these parts here, these are all the different MIDI inputs that come in. So I'm going to click on new and I'm going to create a transformer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the port, so my top keyboard is the Mini Nova, okay? And I will double click on that, and I'm going to fix the channel, and I'm going to set that to channel 1. Because when I first set up uh, my sounds, I set the Mini Nova, I've decided that I want the Mini Nova, which is on the top of my rack, to control channel 1. So I close out of that, and then I link that into the sequencer input. I'm going to create another transformer. I'm just going to stack that neatly under there. Double click on that. I'm going to fix that and I'm going to fix it to channel 2. Port A is the MIDI device that my middle keyboard is attached to, so it connects into that transformer. And then that goes into the sequencer input as well. I'm going to create another transformer. So because I've got three keyboards, I need to split into three channels. Double click on that transformer, fix, okay, set that to channel three. I'm going to connect port B to that transformer and that transformer is going to go into the sequencer input. Now that I've done that, I can click out of the environment. I'm going to go back into my global tracks here and what we'll find is that if I play the top keyboard, I get the keyboard sound. If I play the middle keyboard, I get the pad sound. If I play the bottom keyboard, I get the arpeggiator sound. There's one more setting that I have to do. I'm going to go into 
File, Project Settings, Recording. I've got to make sure that this is ticked here. Auto demix by channel if multi-track recording. So what I'm telling Logic to do is whenever you record MIDI, split it into individual channels. So I've got to make sure that that is checked. If that isn't checked, everything we do in the environment means nothing. Now, if I hit record and start playing, You can see that it's only still going in on the MIDI track, on the middle track. But it is recording all of this stuff as separate channels. And then as soon as I hit the stop button, it maps it out into the individual channels for me. So now when I go back into my range, I can see here, that's the, the chord that I was holding at the bottom with the arpeggiator. There's the pad that I was playing. Where's that gone to? There's the pad that I was playing. And then I can see here, there's those little MIDI lines that I was playing. But now when I play it back, I have the individual parts available to me so that I can edit them or I can tighten them up or I can do something like that. So if I've had a massive jam, uh, then maybe I can cut out the good bits and put all of that together. And that's as simple as it is. So I hope you found that useful. I hope that answers a lot of people's questions. Um, feedback in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to see some links to some of your work. And don't forget to check out my stuff up at www.hirogarimusic.com.